So if David, if you would come and, uh, and share God's word and present the ministry, we would appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Pastor. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Okay, hopefully you're getting some rest and you're surviving the cold. But it's not cold today, right? It warmed up. It warmed up. So we're, we're doing all right. Well, it's good to be here. Um, it has been about six years since we were here last. Um, and we do thank you for your faithfulness in praying and supporting us. You've actually been a part of our support team before we went to Peru, and that was 95. So that's in the history books, and you were already part of our support team. So thank you so much. And I heard from Pastor that my brother Steve came through last year. So he's up in the mountains. We are on the coast in northern Peru. Um, but it's a privilege to serve God wherever he has us. So we'll begin this morning. If you have your Bibles, open them to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. We will be going back and forth from Scripture to Peru and then back to Scripture, then back to Peru and try to wrap up then again with some verses. But we'll begin with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now, what's that first phrase? All the way to the comma, wherever your Bible, depend on different translations. Some may have the second comma. We are ambassadors. What is an ambassador? Representative. All right, you got the word right. A little more specific. Representing. Okay, and you're all spiritual, <laughs> biblical theologians here, okay? In general life, okay? Thinking of this world, a representative of one nation and another nation, okay? One country to another country. So the president names or the country names an ambassador to go from the United States to Peru. Peru names an ambassador to go from Peru to the United States because the president can't be in all of the countries. And so they represent one country. Now, let's go back to scripture. Who are ambassadors, representatives? We are. Okay, what? Let's go back again, 2,000 years. Who is the we? Who writes? Who is writing? Paul. To whom is he writing? Christians. Christians. Okay, more, more specific, more specific. The Corinthians. the Corinthians. And we all know the Corinthians were very spiritually high on the list when it comes to testimony. Is that correct? No. 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 It was a church full of problems. But Paul says, we, who's the we? Amen. Paul and the Corinthians are ambassadors for Christ. So how are you doing? About what? Being an ambassador. Do you have Christ as your Savior? Uh, let me try that again. Do you have Christ as your Savior? Yes. If not, I'll have to change my message. Okay, we'll go to gospel <laughs> preaching here, evangelism. If you have Christ as your Savior, then we are ambassadors. We are representatives of Christ. Now, where is our country? What nation do we represent? Heaven, yes, we haven't been there yet, but we represent heaven. So how are you doing again? Good. good. Okay, you're doing good this morning, but as far as being an ambassador for Christ, are you representing Christ? Does this world need to see ambassadors from heaven? Yes. yes. Who's going to change this world if it's not we who have Christ as our Savior? Is that right? Christ changes things, God changes things, God's word changes things. So we need to be those faithful ambassadors for Christ. Now, what is our message? Same verse, verse 20. Yes, reconciliation. Now, that's a big word. We don't use that word anymore. What does reconciliation mean? Get right. Get right. Okay, what else? Reconciliation. Bring together, yes. Why were we not together with God? Sin, yes. So we have to be brought back to a relationship with God. How is your relationship with God going? 
Are you close with God? Are you whining and fussing? It's cold and there's COVID and all that kind of thing. That doesn't mean you're close to God. We need to be reconciled. So if we are not close to God, what keeps us from being close to God? Sin. Raise your hand if you're a sinner. Good, at least you're honest. That's good, that's good, that's good. You recognize that. So what are you doing about your sin? Dying to it. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, yeah. We need to die to it. We need to ask God to forgive us. We need to recognize it. Reconciliation is not just when we trust Christ. Obviously, there's a huge transformation in, with, in Christ. We become sons of God. Can you imagine that? The sinners that we are, we are sons of God. Do we deserve that? No. But we really like to, oh, got my rights. Eh. No. God and his great mercy and grace reconciles us to himself. But even after we are believers, we need to be reconciled on a daily basis, right? We are still sinners in our everyday life. And so that is the message. We are ambassadors for Christ. Yes, sharing the gospel, but then also after we trust Christ, we must continue to be reconciled to him. And thank the Lord he sent his son to take that sin. Is that right? Are you excited about that? That Christ came and shed his blood on Calvary so that we could have eternal life? Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yeah. So excited. Yeah, okay. Well, as you can tell, I'm a little more informal, and it's that way at my church, too. I ask a lot of questions, but this is a missionary day, presentation, and things like that. Kenya and I are your ambassadors to Peru, South America. We represent you. We serve Christ, but we represent you and other churches that have sent us to Peru, and we count it a privilege to be your ambassador in the country of Peru. Okay, now um, we need to advance. And again, I don't have a clicker, so sorry about that. But we're going to, I don't know what I need to say. Just click and we'll click. Okay, so we'll click on down there next or whatever you want to say there. Okay, we're missing a picture. Is that right? Okay, all right. Okay, all right. If we could, we could just get our prayer card up there, the first one, I think. Oh, that's the first one. Okay, let's go to the next one then. That's the end of it? Well, no. Okay, <laughs> well, we'll keep going. <laughs> okay, where is Peru? Okay, we'll go with this one. Okay, uh, just a little bit different here, and sometimes that happens from computer to computer. But where is Peru? And there should be a map. Next. Okay, well, that's a different map, but that's all right. What color is Peru? What color is Peru? That's all right. It's fine. We'll go back to the last one. Go back to the last one. That's fine. Not a problem. Doing well. Doing well. Okay, there we go. What color is Peru? That is South America. Brown. Okay, kind of the brownish olive on the middle. On the if you if you do your geography, modern day geography, it would be over here on the left in the middle, right? And that's geography. We don't know north and south unless you're a farmer, right? You know, give directions north and south, but you look at a map. It's over here on this side. Peru is the third largest country in South America with about 30 million people. And now we can go to the next one, and we'll divide Peru into three totally distinct geographical regions. Right on the largest body of water on the face of the planet, the Pacific Ocean, is the yellow part, a desert. A desert. And nothing like we have here in the United States. Along the coast of Peru, we get less than two inches of rain a year. How much does Indiana get? <laughs> yeah, in one rainstorm, we can get three or four, okay? But annually, Indiana gets about 35-ish uh, inches of rain, depending on the year, et cetera, but about 35. So we get less than two. So it doesn't even rain, really. January, February is our rainy season on the coast, and we get a light sprinkle, enough to wet the sidewalk, and everybody thinks it's raining cats and dolls. Most of our precipitation comes in June and July, which is our winter, because it's foggy. Like all of June, many years, we don't see the sun. It's just foggy, misty, and that's where we get about half of those almost two inches. Okay, so that's the coast. Temperature-wise, though, 80 in the summer, 
70 in the winter. So <clears throat> come and visit us. Temperature-wise, we're doing good. It is a desert, but as far as temperature goes, um, it might get really freezing cold at night in the wintertime and get all the way down to about 60. So <clears throat> if you're suffering in, here in the States, just come visit us in Peru. Now the brown. The brown includes the mountains. The Andes Mountains peaks up over 22,000 feet. How many of you have been to Colorado, out west, Rocky Mountains? How high are the Rocky Mountain peaks? Just 13, 14, 14. Most, a lot of Colorado peaks are 14, a little higher. Pikes Peak, 14 something. So 14, 22 would be half of that on top. We have roads at 16,000 feet to get up over the hump. And so they're very rugged. Uh, packed in, up and down, no interstates across the mountains. It's impossible to get an interstate. There are paved roads, but just winding up and down. So very high, very rugged mountains. And then the green would be jungle. How much rain do we get in the jungle? Uh-huh, okay, 100 plus inches. So we have the coast, less than two Mountains get about the same as Indiana, 30, 35, and then you get on the other side and we get over 100 inches of rain. So you have um, about half of Peru gets a lot of rain, jungle, but only about 10% of Peru's population live over there. Very few people on that side. And that's where the Amazon River begins. The Amazon River begins in Peru, but then goes all the way across Brazil into the Atlantic Ocean. So that's a little bit about Peru. We'll go to the next slide here. And we'll get back to our Bibles, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, and we'll stay here a, a little while. Hebrews chapter 12, and you need to have it there because I'm going to ask some questions. So get ready. We need to get all these great theologians from Prairie Baptist Church in action. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jumping, down to, or jumping up to verse 1. So great a cloud of witnesses, all these witnesses, who are they? The faithful people. The faithful people. All these witnesses, <coughs> who are they? Believers. Believers. All these witnesses, who are they? All the ones who mentioned in chapter 11. Thank you very much. There we got a great theologian right up there. Yes. What comes before chapter 12? Chapter 11, chapter 11 that's right. We got, and that's the kind of great theologians that I have in my church in Peru also. I give them a hard time. What comes before chapter 3? Chapter 2. Okay, so great cloud of witnesses. All those in chapter 11, as an example, heroes of the faith, men who were faithful to God in different situations, and now the writer says, since we have this cloud of witnesses, those that have gone before us, great examples, not sinless, but faithful. What should we do? Run the race. Thank you, Pastor. Run the race. Run the race. Are you ready to run? Are you running the race for God? That was a question. Yes. <laughs> Are you running for the Lord? Now, what kind of a race is this one? A spiritual race. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little more carnal. I'm thinking of worldly things. What kind of a race? The Tokyo 2020 games are coming up in 2021, but Tokyo 2020... Summer Olympics, marathon. Where do we get that idea? Is it a 100-meter dash? No, why not? How do we know that this race is not a 100-meter dash? Ten seconds and it's over. It's longer. 
Does it say how long it is? How do we know in this verse that this is a long race and not a short sprint? Endurance. There we go. That's the word. Run with endurance. Run with patience. Run with perseverance. You don't run a 100-meter dash with patience or perseverance endurance. We're talking about a marathon. Now you, everybody got the 26 miles in. Yes, we're running a marathon spiritually. Until when? Until we're done. No, until God says we're done, okay? So who determines when we reach the end? God does. So are you still running? Are you sitting down? I need a break. The race is not over until God says our race is done. We don't get a break. It's a marathon. If you sit down, you don't finish first. We need to keep going. We run the race with patience, with perseverance, with endurance. Now, in order to run the best way, what do we need to do? Still in verse 1. All right, set aside. What do we set aside? Weight of sin and? All right, how many of you have seen, who's, who's coming up in the, can I get away from this or I need to stay here for the recording? I better stay here. Um, oh, well, I'll suffer here and stay still. Um, 100 meter dash. Back when I was growing up, it was Carl Lewis. Do you remember him? Medals, all kinds of medals, long jump, 100-meter uh, dash. Last couple Olympics, it's been the same bolt. All right. How fast do they run the 100-meter dash? Less than 10 seconds. I mean, they're moving. They're moving. Have you ever seen Carl Lewis or Hussein Bolt run with cowboy boots and coveralls? Why not? It's a hindrance. Wearing cowboy boots, is that a problem? Is that wrong? No. Wearing overalls, is that wrong? No. This verse is saying we need to put aside some good things because we want to run the race the best way we can. Yes, we have to put away sin, obviously. But if we are going to run with perseverance, run with endurance, run as God wants us to run, there are some good things that we put aside because we want what is best for God. How are you running your race? Well, I'll run as long as I have my stuff. And you aren't going to make it to the end of the line that way. We need to lay aside some good things and sin so that we can run the race as we should. Is God deserve, deserving of us laying aside some things so that we can run the race as he would desire? Is God worthy of us sacrificing so that we can live for him? What does the United States need? Another president? Different Congress? Different governor? Or do we need Christians that are running the race as God desires? I realize our country is going down the tubes and fast. But believers have the answer. You have the answer. Are you running the race in a way that pleases God? God has given us the privilege to run in Peru. South America, different country, different culture, different language. But yet, Scripture is the same. And so we run with perseverance down there as well. Something that helps us, and this takes us to verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of the faith. Where are your eyes set? Well, this morning it's here at church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking about God. You're thinking about the Bible. Yes, because it's Sunday morning. That's what we do. How about yesterday? Were your eyes set on Christ? Did you live for Jesus this last week, Thursday, Friday? 
How about tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday? How many days a week are we Christians? How many days a week are we believers in Christ? Is it just on Sunday? Can others tell that we're running a race for God? That's what this world needs. We are Christ's ambassadors. We are representatives of Christ, and we must show Christ with our life. Again, we run the race with patience. So, are you ready to run this morning? Yes. <laughs> you should already be running. Next slide. See if it comes up. Yes, there it is. Thank you. Here we go. We need to be on the racetrack. Next slide. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stillwell Stadium. Let's see if it all comes up here. Next one. Click. Welcome to the Stillwell Track and Field. Okay, the whole stadium disappeared there, but there's supposed to be a stadium in the track. Next, tr next slide. And it all disappeared. Okay, something happened. Uh, it was showing up there. Uh, when we tried it before the service, but now all of a sudden everything, I think it's because we just used the, the background with the songs and the announcements. So all of the, the that's fine, that's fine. Well, um, we'll see how, how far we get. It, it sounds like all the background is, backgrounds have disappeared, but that, that's fine. Basically, uh, right there you had the Stillwell Stadium, and we're going to have a track and field meet this morning. Okay, We are going to run. Um, and we're going to begin with a marathon, the Stillwell Marathon. So are you ready? Basically, the Stillwell Marathon is what Kenny and I do year after year after year. For the last 20 years, we have been involved in the same three ministries. It's been Victory Baptist Church, our Bible College. Yes, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We've got high-tech tech people here. Uh, the stadium appeared. All right, thank you, thank you. Stillwell Stadium, next one, and it should show okay there it is welcome to the stillwell track and field next next slide there we are now we're inside the stadium are we ready to run yes, yes. okay we're ready to run we're going to go okay next one and this brings us to the stillwell ministry marathon and we'll just keep going there fill in the, the blank there uh church iglesia bautista victoria victory baptist church and then Seminario Bautista del Peru, Peru Baptist Bible College. Seminary is the Spanish word for a religious university type thing. And then Campamento Bautista La Fortaleza, Fortress Baptist Camp. These are our ministries that we are involved in every year. For the last 20 some years, we have been involved in these ministries. This is our marathon, okay? We go, we go, we go, we go. We keep going uh, year after year with these three ministries. So our church, Bible College, and then camp. And let's begin with our church. And that's the picture you have there um, on your or in your bulletin is victory. Yes, go ahead. That's fine. Uh, lots in Peru are small. Our entire church lot is less than 2,200 square feet. So our entire lot is not the size of the auditorium here. That's the entire lot. So we go up and we can show the slide. There we go. We have four floors. The first floor is the auditorium. Second floor is the parsonage. Third floor is Sunday school, and fourth floor is Fellowship Hall, and we don't have an elevator. So it's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky uh, when we have our <coughs> potlucks, our pitch-ins, and we have to go all the way up. But uh, God continues to provide, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But God has blessed. We started the church with mom and dad in 99, and obviously we're 20 years into that, 21. Um, we have about 100 people, and we can just click through the next one there, next two um, God has blessed, and so we're, we're filling up our auditorium, uh, Christmas picture there. We also have, like, I think you have Awanas, or what do you have, Kings Awana, okay? We have kids clubs there as well. We work with the children, teaching them about God's Word, and we can just clip through the next two there, uh-huh, working with the children. And then about three years ago, the next slide will show you that we have, we started a music school in our church. Our oldest son studied sacred music at Faith Baptist Bible College, went to Peru, and wanted to teach music. He said, we'll have piano lessons and violin lessons. Who wants to sign up? And there were over 20 of our children and teenagers that wanted to take music lessons. And that eventually grew into over 30 students, not all from our church, but most of them from our church. And so that is ongoing. And I just got a message uh, yesterday that because of COVID, they haven't been able to do it. But they're going to start up again 
um, just virtually, Zoom and things like that. So God has really used music in our church and our young people are, are learning the instruments and so that has been an asset to our, our music there. So that's Victory Baptist Church. We'll go on to our next marathon event here, uh, which is our Bible College, the seminary. And God has blessed. The Bible College was started in 1972. So do the math. How old is the Bible College? Almost 50 years. Almost 50 year. Lord willing, in October, we will celebrate 50 years of ministry. And that's, that's a huge blessing. And we can go through the slides here. Um, uh -huh. That was, we have about 50 students. That picture there was last year at the beginning of March. It was our opening ceremony for the school year. Again, we are south of the equator, and so January, February, our summer months, we start school, All everybody starts school in March, and then right before Christmas, we end. So we're opposite. June and July, it's cold and winter, school goes on. But January and February, we're on vacation, and so here we're presenting the freshman class, the new students, March of last year, right before COVID. Students got there a week later, restrictions, <laughs> lockdown, uh, but they were there, so we carried on to some degree what we could, uh, the school there, but we thank the Lord for what he's doing at the Bible College, training Peruvian people, and then they go out and pastor the churches, start new churches as missionaries. So again, this is one of our marathon ministries, and we can go through the, the slides here, and it'll show you our director, our president, classroom, and then we'll wrap up with a uh, graduation in 2019 and this is the faculty the professors some missionaries but some Peruvian pastors we work hand in hand at this ministry so God is using the Bible College to strengthen our churches now third ministry in our marathon Fortress Baptist Camp camp is about an hour south of town but that's a huge blessing we thank the Lord for what he has done there our campground has seven and a half acres how much land does Prairie Baptist Church have? Ten. Okay, so our entire campground is three-fourths what you have here at Prairie Baptist Church. Peruvian people, they don't need all the elbow room and all the space. They like to be close. And so seven and a half acres is an adequate uh, campground. We can skip or move through the lines there. Um, again, last year, 2020, January and March is our summer, so camps went on as normal. We had family camp. Uh, Kenya and I attended as, as campers for that week, and here we see our chapel with them. Children's classes are going on, kind of like camps here. Families get together, spend time together, study God's word together, have devotions together, go to the pool together, have fun. It's just camp, right? Camp is enjoyable. Nothing like boys against the girls on the playground equipment, right? You got to get that in when you go to camp, boys against the girls. So kids are kids all around the globe. So family camp was exciting. That was at the beginning of January. February came around and we had our youth retreat. And I had the privilege of being the director at the youth, re retreat, and youth retreat. And we can, yeah, just click every few seconds, click to the next one. That's fine. Um, good group of, of young people. There we have them uh, at our campground. And God blessed. And what's camp about? Just bringing campers together with their counselor to study God's word, to be together with God, make decisions. People are saved at camp. People make decisions to serve God, and so we thank the Lord for what he's doing. Um, yeah, click and click again. There, one of the highlights this last year was our new zip line. Um, there you can see a little bit about what desert is like. If it's green on the coast, it's because it is watered. So we had to water the trees to get them going. But the rest is dirt, dust. Um, welcome to the coast of Peru. Um, but camp is fun. Camp is not camp without food. So we'll get you a picture of the dining room there as well. Um, but God continues to, to use camp as an extension of our churches. And so we thank God for what he's doing. February also brought around ladies retreat. And Candy was the director for the ladies retreat. There and again, just click through the, the slides there. Oh, there's a mountain. We go hiking. Actually, it's a hill, but you would call it a mountain. Um, but uh, there we are. There's the ladies' retreat. Uh, again, full, full chapel there for ladies' retreat. And their purpose is getting together, studying God's word, opening God's word, sharing with each other, encouraging each other to do uh, what God has bid us in his word. So that's a little bit about our camp. And again, this is our marathon. So the Stillwell Ministry Marathon 
has three ministries, our church, our Bible college, and our camp. Now let's go on to another discipline in our Stillwell track and field competition. What's the next one? Okay, there it is. What's the next sport? Cross country, yes, cross country, but this is a crazy cross country, right? It's kind of rocky, but in Peru, what we're saying today is this is church planning. Victory Baptist Church has three daughter churches. One of them is Fortress Baptist Church, Gift Baptist Church, and Maranatha Baptist Church. Fortress Baptist Church is right next to camp, okay, and has the same name, small town, but there's a church there, and we help the church there. And then Gift Baptist Church was a, a combined effort with four other sister churches from town, and we started a new church in 2012, and they are just finishing a construction building project, uh, and God continues to bless there with a pastor of one of our, of our Bible college. Then Maranatha Church was started with basically three or four families from our church that lived on the north side of town, across town, and they would come to our church Sunday mornings, but they kept asking us, Pastor, when are you going to have a Bible study in our house? We'll, we'll set up our house, give our house so that we can have a Bible study. So my dad finally said, Okay, a Tuesday evening, I'll be there if that'll work with your schedule. Sure, Tuesday evening, we just want you to come. So Tuesday evening came around, and there were more than 20 adults in their front room ready to have a Bible study. 20 adults is enough to start a church, don't you think? So Dad said, okay, next Tuesday I'll be here. And they were back. And the next Tuesday... And the next Tuesday, and that was October 2015, and that is now a church, Maranatha Baptist Church, again, pastored by one of our Bible college student and graduates. And so God is blessing. Now we're going to complicate the cross country, and we can go to the next slide. We would like to team up with some other churches in town, again, to start a church in Huamachuco. Say Huamachuco with me. Huamachuco. Yeah, it's a different pronunciation, but we are teaming up with five six sister churches in Trujillo to start a church in Huamachuco. Huamachuco is a city, is the largest city, mountain city in our state. So it's about four hours away up into the mountains, uh, 50,000 people. There are Catholic churches, there are Pentecostal churches, and there are Seventh-day Adventist churches. There's one Southern Baptist church with about 15 people in it. So how much of the gospel are they hearing? 50,000 people in this mountain town. Very little, very little. And we can go on down there. But it's a strategic city because we would like to start a mother church in Huamachuco because all the surrounding towns come to Huamachuco for their business and, and banking and things like that. So it's very strategic. And we would ask you to pray for this city of Huamachuco. We have made different survey trips, evangelism uh, trips up there, but we just need a pastor, a missionary that would go, a team maybe, just to live there and start uh, the church there. So that's about four hours up into the mountains, uh, uh, the largest city in, in our state. So that's cross country. We've done a marathon, our three main ministries, church, Bible college, and camp, church planning, our cross country. What's the next Discipline in our track and field competition. Relay. relay race, yes, relay race. Do you like watching relay races? Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty fun. Passing the baton. What does that mean when it comes to ministry? Right, okay, and we can move on here. Kenya and I have been in Peru for 25 years. Yeah, we're old. 25 years, and if God gives us strength and Christ tarries his coming, then we will be in Peru, Lord willing, 15 to 20 more years. But we're over halfway. So it's time to pass the baton on to others and training others. And as we go down here, there are different ways that we are doing that. Obviously, the Bible college is passing the baton on to others, to other young people. They are starting churches, serving in different ways. So we're passing the baton. Uh, about 10 years ago, we started a pastoral internship program in our church where we take one of the graduates and they work with us for a year or two, and then they go out to start a church or to pastor a church, getting some experience. Another thing we just started two years ago was a uh, college prep program, basically getting them ready for Bible college. Anybody interested in our church and wants to know what is Bible college all about? Well, we went through a class. During a year, they would read the entire Bible, 
We would help them with their devotions, go through different studies, just getting them ready for Bible college if they were interested. Right now from our church, we have, well, we're going to have, we have one that just graduated last year. Two are in the Bible college. They'll be starting their sophomore year, and two more, Lord willing, will be beginning uh, in March, uh, the new uh, college year. And so we thank the Lord for what God is doing, just using our own church people to think about serving the Lord full time. Another way that we want to pass the baton on is assistant pastors. And so well, what does that have to do? Well, Dad and I have pastored Victor Baptist Church, and we have been the only pastors since the church started. We've tried to get other proven people on board to join our pastoral staff in just different regions. They decide to go to another church, or they decide to go start a church as missionaries. So that is a huge need in the next term here when we go back. It's just to bring a couple more pastors on board to help us with the ministry there. And so again, that's passing the baton. I'm not going to be around forever. And so we need to pass church responsibilities on to others as well. And then we come to Prairie Baptist Church because we want to pass the baton on to you all. Yeah. Do we have some future missionaries here at Prairie Baptist Church that would like to come to Peru and help us out? Yeah, okay, well, we need to work on that one. We're in a relay race. They dropped the baton here, folks. You dropped the, well, maybe not full time. Maybe just come and give us a visit. Yeah, I would say so. We have ministry teams come every year. Obviously, COVID has put some dampers on, on mission trips and things like that, but wait two or three years down the road. Um, but come give us a visit. Help us out in whatever way you can or just see what God is doing in Peru. We enjoy having teams come, and so we're trying to pass the baton on to others. That's why we come home on furlough. One, two, report and share what God is doing. But another one is just encourage others to come to Peru and be a part of what God is doing. And then one last way that we pass the baton on obviously has to be with our children, right? If a missionary isn't passing the baton on to his own kids, then something is wrong. And so we'd like to share a little bit about what God is doing in our children. First of all, our oldest son, and we can go one by one there, Benjamin, got married about a year and a half ago to Jennifer Swedberg. She actually grew up in Brazil as a missionary kid, and they're married. They both studied sacred music at Faith Baptist Bible College in Iowa, and he is now an assistant pastor in Flint, Michigan. But both of them are working on master's trying to seek what God would have them do in the future. So pray for, for them as they decide future ministry. The next one, our daughter, Rebecca, was married two and a half years ago to Kyle England. They met at Faith Baptist Bible College. Kyle actually spent about a year in Peru, part of his college education, learning Peru or learning Spanish and serving in, in the country. Then he came back and decided, Rebecca, <coughs> I think I want to go out with you and date you and eventually marry and God worked it out. Um, they are serving um, on a farm, but working in their church uh, in Oneida, Illinois, close to Galesburg. And as of 16 weeks ago, they allowed Candy and I to be grandparents. So they have a little baby. Uh, there she is, Evelyn Jo England, still well, if you get everything in there, but um, she's a cutie, and we just came from there uh, earlier in this week. We spent a few days, so anytime we actually touch Illinois territory, we have to go through uh, the grandbaby's house, so we're enjoying Evie. Okay, our third uh, child would be Abigail. She spent a year with us last year and came back from Peru. When we came back on furlough, she's still single, seeking God's will for her life. She graduated from Faith Baptist Bible College and is now working on campus there. Um, but she would like to go back to Peru if God allows. And so she's deciding uh, God's future in her life as well. Okay, next. Did I tell you well, we have a grandbaby? Yes, her name is Evie Jo, and she's a cutie. Yeah, there she is. Okay, we have one more child. We have two boys and two girls. Jacob is a senior at Faith Baptist Bible College in the Pastoral Studies Program. Again, Seeking God's will, Lord willing, graduating at the beginning of May and then getting married at the end of May. Um, so a lot of planning there, but we thank the Lord for our children as they consider ministry. And we'd ask you to pray for them, all four of them, Benjamin, Rebecca, Abigail, and Jacob, that God would lead in their lives and they would see God's leading and direction. All right, well, let's move on. 
just in case you were wondering, we are grandparents and we have a grandbaby. Her name is Evie Jo. Okay, well, we've done a marathon. We've done cross, uh, cross country. We did passing the baton. What's this one? This is our last discipline in the Stillwell track and field, pole vaulting. How many of you have ever done pole vaulting? We have one, ladies and gentlemen, yes. It was not pretty, it was not pretty. okay, all right, yeah. We, pre we give, share this presentation or something similar at our supporting churches so far since we came back uh, to the States in August. So I don't know, we've been in maybe 12 churches. And so far, you are probably number four in 12 churches that have actually pole vaulted. Not very many people pole vault, right? And personally, I would say it's one of the most, if not the most difficult discipline event in a track and field. I mean, we can run, you know, we may not beat the record, but we can get 100 meters, right? It might take us all day, but we could get the 100 meters. Marathon, it might take us a week, but we could get it done, even if we walked. We could throw the discus, we could throw the javelin, we could even jump over the hurdles because you can knock them over and keep going. Um, we could do a lot of things, but pole vaulting, most of us could jump higher without the pole than with the pole, right? That's a little more difficult. So as we wrap up our presentation, we are wanting to go to new heights, higher, and that's where you come in. Can you help us? Basically, this has to do with a project, a building project. We need property. Again, you remember how big our church is, church lot? Almost 2,200 square feet. So we can go right down the line there. Thank you. Um, building project. But we would like to ask for your help. And basically, it's our furlough project. As we go church to church, we're asking our, our churches to jump on board and help us out. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, and that'll show you our church. We have about 100 people in an auditorium. That right there is 28 feet wide by 78 feet long. That's the entire lot. So if you take off 10 feet for the patio out front, so then it's 28 feet wide by 68-ish. And we have restrooms and a little nursery and the sound booth in there. So we're packing in. We can go to the next one where the church people uh, are. There we have 100. Or oh, I flipped them. That's fine. Um, yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem. We just back up one. That's fine. So basically, 28 feet is from that wall. I'm going to kind of guess here. All of you carpenters can help me out. 28 is about that wall to this wall. 78 feet would be, let's say, from this wall. I'm not sure we would make it to the back wall of the auditorium. That's about the entire lot for a church. And right now we have about 100 people. Well, not with COVID, but normally we have 100 people. God has blessed. So we need more property. And as you can look at it, there's a, a building on either side. However, the property there in the picture is actually the exact same size as our church lot, just because of the angle it looks like it's bigger. But the one with all the pictures on the front of it, it's rented out, and they sell construction products, <coughs> brick, concrete, rebar, and things like that. But the owner would like to sell it. However, because of Peru's financial and economic stability the last 20, 25 years, prices keep rising and rising. Seven years ago, international outside investors came to Peru and prices really went up, skyrocketing. And so every square meter of dirt is $1,000. Our church property is 200 square meters. The lot next door is 200 square meters. So how much is that land worth? $200,000. We're in city limits. Any city in Peru right now has property at that price. So <clears throat> can you help us? We're talking pole vaulting, way up there. It's way beyond what our church can do, way beyond what we as missionaries can do. So we're presenting this to all of our supporting churches. So could you pray, first of all, 
The land belongs to God. Gold and silver belongs to God. But we could use 200,000. That would divide up into 200 gifts of 1,000. A little more manageable, a little more manageable. Or if someone just happens to have 200,000 laying around, I mean, we could put it to good use. You could give us the property. We as a church will do what we can to build. But the land is expensive in Peru. That's phase one. Now we go to the next slide. On the very other side of the church, you can see the empty lot, church there in the middle. The red is the corner lot. It's not 200 square feet, but it's 300 or 200 square meters. It's 300 square meters. So again, what's the land price? 300,000. But it already has some construction on it, so they throw another 100,000 in. So that's 400,000 for the corner lot. You put the empty one, that would be 600, half a million. Yeah, it's a pile of money. If we were to purchase the other two lots and have all three of them, all three, we would not have one-fifth of an acre. All three lots would be less than one-fifth of an acre, but it's on the main avenue in our town. It's in city limits, and so it's a strategic position, but just to give you an idea of land. Property is high, so there's our pole vault, way up there. So if you could pray. That's what we're doing here while we're on furlough. I've never asked for anything near that amount of money, um, but God is the owner. It's his work, and we are his servants, so we'd like to share that with you. Open your Bibles, if you would, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we'll close with this passage in the next slide there. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through the end of the chapter. First Corinthians 9:24 reads, "Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth a prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every one or every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul is saying many run, but one receives the prize. Modern day Olympics, many run, but three receive the prize. Gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal. Thankfully, if you run for the Lord, it's not just a gold medal. It's not just a Greek wreath back in those days. It's not just a silver medal, a bronze medal, but it depends on our faithfulness. If we are faithful, we all will receive a reward in heaven. Are you looking forward to your re rewards in heaven? Do you have rewards waiting for you? What would I do with a reward in heaven, some people say. You need to change your focus. We run to receive a reward, not because of the reward, because of the person for whom we run. We, we run for the Lord. We run because he wants us to run. We must run and be faithful. I box. Not as just beating the flies. No, box with a purpose there. I run in such a way to win an incorruptible prize reward. And then in the last verse, Paul says, I want to run so that in such a way that I am not disqualified. Kenya and I would like to finish the race and not be disqualified. Can you pray for us that we would be faithful if God tarries the next 15, 20 years that we would still be in the race? We don't know where God will lead us, but we want to be faithful. And as you are here back in the States, if you don't join us in Peru, then pray that we would run faithfully in Peru. And obviously, if we are running faithfully there, we need you to run faithful here in the United States. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the work that you do in our lives. Thank you for salvation. 
I pray that you'd help us to be faithful, running the race that you, you have set before us. Thank you for Prairie Baptist Church. Pray that you'll continue to guide them, help them to keep their eyes on you. We thank you for scripture, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.